Credit to you, my students, and my viewers in general. This is Jide Unichas, your lecturer, English lecturer. So last lecture, we kick-started the parsing, that's the practical parsing, that is analysis of sentence, sentence analysis, that is parse of speech. So as I said then, there are 10, loosely there are 10 parts of speech, four are lexical items and six grammatical items. We have four items, four parts of speech that are lexical items, that is words that have their own meanings. They have their meanings on their own, distinct meanings. Then we have the six grammatical items, which are merely used for grammatical purposes, just you know, to arrange. When we try to arrange the four lexical items in any construction, we use the grammatical items for the arrangement, that is for the proper arrangement. So to further illustrate the above distinction, that is the distinction between lexical items and grammatical items. So we have the following. Let's consider the following hypothetical sentence. Hypothetical sentence that is from hypothetical from hypothesis. That is not, when we talk of hypothesis, something that is not actually, you didn't, that does not actually happen. It does not actually, it's not actually the real thing, not actual thing. But we just use this for you no know, explanation, you no know, uh, sake. So hypothetical sentence, they just assume there's something, you no, know, this sentence just something like this. So we have, for example, we have I eat a egg yesterday. I eat a egg yesterday. That construction is ungrammatical. It's an ungrammatical construction. I ate an egg yesterday. Yesterday is past, it's a past tense. So that sentence is a past tense. When we use yesterday, it's, it's already past. So we can use it. It is present verb. So we have to use the past, that's it. So I eat yesterday is ungrammatical. When we talk of egg, egg starts with a vowel sound, a. So when a word starts with a vowel sound, we use an for the article. The article N, that's indefinite article, must be used, not no, the indefinite article A. A is used when a word starts with a consonant sound. So I eat a egg is ungrammatical. That is, you don't use it for past action. I eat a, a egg yesterday. I eat a egg yesterday. No, that's past tense. So you don't use it. You use et. It is et. An et. Then a egg. You don't say a egg. It should be an egg. So that construction is ungrammatical. But the meaning is clear. The meaning is very obvious. Eating of egg. Anybody can understand what that construction, that sentence, you know, means. But it is ungrammatical. Whereas the sentence, I ate an angel. Yesterday, I ate an angel yesterday. This, you see, we use et here for past action. And angel starts with a vowel sound. So we use an, which also agrees in a way. You see, so this construction, I ate an angel, should I say is grammatical, but it's meaningless. So when we say something, the construction is grammatical. And it doesn't make sense. There's a problem somehow. Because for any construction to be grammatical, there must be proper arrangement of the words. And you no, know, it you know the, the arrangement that the construction must be sensible, must be meaningful. So when a construction that obeys the rules of grammar, you obey the rules of grammar in the construction, but it doesn't make sense. Then we can say grammatical. So we can say this construction, I ate an angel yesterday. We can say it is grammatically ungrammatical. Grammatically ungrammatical. That is, is there is grammar inside. That is, 
intestinally, inside, inside it, there is grammar. But, you know, in the, in the general way, when you listen to that, the people say that, you know, it doesn't make sense. So it's ungrammatical in a way. But, you know, you know, in, uh, in, uh, that is, inside of it, there is grammar inside. But it doesn't make sense. So we can't say it's purely grammatical. So we can say it's, you know, <laughs> grammatically Grammatical. It's just like when we say, you no, know, we can use, we can, you know, use this. We call this a antithesis. When we use two opposite words in a way, like uh, we talk of uh, something being fortunately unfortunate, fortunately unfortunate. That boy died. We can say he's dead. Actually, uh, no. Was uh, was was good in a way. His, his death was okay. You could say the boy died. Fortunately, unfortunately, the boy died in the sense that if the boy had not died, he would have been instrumental to the death of many people, and he might, you know, he would run mad. So fortunately, he died. So, but it was unfortunate that he died. So we can have constructions like this. So in this case. We try to you know, you know to show the distinction, the difference between constructions that are grammatical and those that are not you know, grammatical. So we still talk of meanings. So I ate an angel yesterday. No, no meaning there. No, it doesn't make sense. But there is grammar, something. There's grammar inside. Whereas I eat an egg yesterday. There is meaning, it is meaningful, but no grammar at all. So we can have that. That's, that's, that's fine. Then we talk of the parts of speech. The parts of speech, as I said, there are 10 parts of speech. So four less good items, words that have meanings of their own, and six ungrammatical items. So of the four you know, less good items, noun and verb are the most important, are the most important part of speech, that is noun and verb. And so the reason being that, for example, when we talk of uh, uh, the first speech, that is of a child, the child's first speech, we call this telegraphic speech. The child makes use of only the verb and the noun. He doesn't have time for other items, just the noun, daddy, dog, come, house. Even when the child may not have to obey the rule of uh, present or past tense, no, just the verb, come. You know, changing it to past doesn't appeal you know, to, to the child. What matters is for the child to communicate his communication, to get you know, his thought across. So it's just the verb and the noun. Yes. Daddy, dog, come, eat, food. These are telegraphic you know, from, from, you know, words. That is what we use when, when we used to send telegrams in those days. We made use of verbs and nouns. So we have verbs and nouns are the most important you know, parts of speech. So we have this. Then, so any part of speech is a simple single item. Let us be careful of this. When we talk of part of speech, no two words can form a part of speech. A part of speech must be only one word. A single item or a simple, single, simple no, item or compound. A word that is only one word. A word that is one, a single word is a, is a single simple word. It's, it's, it's a part of speech. Any word at all, one is only one, it's a part of speech. But when we have two words coming together with having, when we have two words or two or three words affinated with having, they have formed only one word. That's a compound word. It's still a part of speech. When two words come together, you no, know, with having joined together as one, is still a part of speech. But when we have more than one word separated, this time we are talking of phrase, a phrase or clause, 
or sentence, a phrase or a clause or a sentence. Now, later I'm going to explain to you the difference between clause and sentence because there, there are some subtle you know, differences. So phrase, you know this later, clause then sentence. The pivot or central point of reference in any sentence or statement is the noun. Noun, when we talk, I talk of a uh, verbal noun, that's the most important. Noun is still more important than verb. So noun is the most important. A noun can stand alone on its own as T. You no, know, we know what is happening. You can't say anything. That's why you can express anything without a noun being involved. Noun is the point of reference. When you mention adjective, it must still describe, qualify a noun. If it's a verb, it must be the action or something else of a noun. So there's no way we can say anything, communicate, you no. Know, without a noun being present. But some may say that there are some cases where only verbs can you know, be present without any noun, as still, you know, from sentences. For example, when we talk of the imperative sentence. Imperative, that is a, a, a sentence that is a form of a command, you know, commanding, giving order. Come here, come, stand, sit. When we say come, there is a noun, there is a noun, or pronoun, a noun, no, or the linely. There is, when I say come, anything that is imperative, you are addressing the second person. Come, do it, stand, write. There is you on the linely. You must be present, but it may not you know, be visible. It is on the linely, present. Come means you come, go. You go. So a noun must be present. I don't forget when I say noun. You is not a noun, it's a pronoun. Whatever, when we use pronoun, we are, pronoun stands for noun. So anytime we talk of pronoun, we are talking of a noun. But we are not just repeating, we are not mentioning the name or the noun itself. But something is standing for the noun. So noun is the most important you know, part of speech. The most important, there's no other part of speech you mentioned you know, that appears in construction without referring to a noun. It more, all part of speech revolve around the noun. This is a fact, it's a fact. So the pivot, that is the central point or reference or in any sentence or statement is the noun. So all other part of speech revolve around it. We, we may define a noun as anything at all. See, in most you know, institutions, even secondary and tertiary institutions, you know, teachers tend to teach students you know, to define nouns. You don't ask a student to, what is a noun? People, you know, there is that conventional definition. A noun is the name of a place or a person. It's rubbish, you don't say that. It's what you have to teach the students is to be able to identify a noun. When they see a noun, they should know this is a noun. Not defining a noun the name of a person. No, that's not it. That should be a way you let the students know what a noun is. In any particular passage, they should be able to identify a noun and also know the function of that noun in that particular context. So, in my own characteristic, you know, manner of teaching. A noun must be anything, anything, real or unreal. A noun must be anything real or unreal, actual or imagined, an idea or a concept, an idea or a concept, animate or inanimate, Concrete or abstract, in this world or in the world beyond, in a waking state or in a dream state, just anything at all, anything at all that you can think of, 
And so a verb, so here and now is just that. All other parts of speech, now when we start talking about this, you see that they revolve around the noun. For example, we see a verb is that part of speech that expresses, see, is, there's another problem with our teachers. They keep teaching our, our children you know, that a verb is an action word. A verb, that a verb is an action word. Not at all, not just an action word. A verb is not only express, not express, not just action. So let's see now. So a verb is that part of speech that expresses the action, state, state of being, mood, condition of a noun. See, so a verb expresses this. It is action of a noun, state of a noun. If I say, I am a man, that am is not expressing my action. It's not action. It's just my state of being. I, I sleep, for example, I sleep. Sleep is not expressing action. It's just my state. I feel bad. Feel is not expressing action. It's expressing mood. You know, there are, I must, I must do it. Must is not expressing action. It's kind of a mood. It's just mood. That is my willingness. So something that is a must for me. So a verb, a verb is that part of speech that expresses the action, state, state of being, mood, condition of a noun. As I said, I'm going to rush you, we'll be moving gradually. Maybe tomorrow I will continue from here. But let me tell you, this and gentlemen students, and my actual students and prospective students, as well as viewers in general, that this program is unique, as I've said, it's unique. When I say unique, you no, know, one of its, the, 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 the only one of its kind. So please try to be part of this. We have a group on Facebook, that's JC Training Concept. So you can join the group and read through what we have there. There are other videos on this English that you will find in that group, JC Training Concepts. So you see this. Then the you know how to register and other things you see. When you just go through, you scroll down, you see a post there. That's an update that is intro one, introductory lecture one. You see how to register, course applications, everything. Please try and do that. Please, viewers, help to you know, like this video. Like the video, you can make your comments, no, no problem. Then you can share the video, please, and subscribe to the channel. That's JCTV channel. Please do that. And because uh, we have a lot to do. And uh, I'm so busy, I have a lot of things doing, that eventually I may be coming, you know, uh, you know I'm becoming on, 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 on board. Becoming on board just every, you know, every day, virtually every day, because when the time is there for us, you know, we know that, yes, the time has come. So I am for you. Thank you very much. From here, we move on. All the other parts of speech, why I'm tr why I'm trying to you know, you know, define them, you see that they all revolve around a noun. They must, you know, they are, you know, the noun is the part of reference for all the parts of speech. So that's why the noun is very important. As I said, a verb expresses the action state, state of being, mood, condition of a noun. Let's stop there for now. Thank you very much.